best of France 98. With official restaurant of the World Cup, McDonald's. <laughs> Opal. And Konica. Hello to you and a very warm welcome from Jeremy Langdon and Angus Lochran. Sunday the 12th of July 1998 was an unforgettable day for France, an unforgettable day in Paris. Thousands were on the streets, in fact over a million on the Champs-Élysées after France had been crowned world champions after beating Brazil 3-0 in the Stade de France with two from Zidane and one from Petit. The final in some ways overshadowed by the mystery over the fitness of Ronaldo, but no one in France and no one in Paris could care a jot. France, the first host nation to hold aloft the World Cup in 20 years since Argentina in 1978, and the biggest celebration in France since the ending of the Second World War. This is the story of France 98. The 12th of June, a month before the glorious final, and France were to play in Marseille for their opening match against South Africa. With the World Cup only 48 hours old, this was where it began for the hosts and for the French public. The footballing public of uh, Marseille turned out to give them a great ovation and sing with pride the Marseillaise. The opening opponents for France were South Africa, but it was France who were to provide all the early ammunition. And after 34 minutes of patient football, they took the lead with a header from Christophe Dugatti. Zidane floating in the corner, Dugatti getting up, and that was the crucial opening goal for the hosts. In the second half, they had to wait until a bizarre own goal from Issa, 12 minutes from time, gave them the comfort of a two-goal advantage. One thing was for certain, it had been a nervy start to the French campaign in France 98. But all nerves were to end when Jokhev played the ball across to no real danger, but Issa putting the ball into his own net to give them a two-goal lead. Injury time at the end of the match and the French were to get a third. They still debate whether it was Henri or whether it was Issa again. But of course, uh, everything had its price and Dugarry and Zidane were to be that price. Firstly, Dugarry. An injury that would uh, prove costly and rule out a large part of his participation in the rest of the World Cup. And then Zinedine Zidane against Saudi Arabia. That moment of madness, a two-match suspension. Cart Rouge, cart expensive for Zinedine Zidane. Well, Zidane may have been sent off in the Stade de France, but France still too good for Saudi Arabia and a thumping win here for them with two goals for Thierry Henry. The first on 36 minutes, it was a game remembered, of course, for the sending off of Zidane Carter. But in the end, France romping home, and this was the one that clinched it on 85 minutes. Watch for the back heel from Jokaev and Elizarazu. A fine finish from him. Henri to Trezeguet and Elizarazu. And so on to Lyon, where France were to entertain Denmark in what effectively was a match which would decide the group. Yuri Djokov with an opportunity after 12 minutes to open the scoring from the penalty spot. And although Peter Schmeichel guessed right, Djokov kept up the remarkable record of penalty takers in normal play in the World Cups. Uh, none missed, of course, in the last two finals and the opening goal coming to settle the nerves after 12 minutes. But the Danes were to have the last laugh in three minutes before half-time. Another penalty this time. Michael Laudrup scoring the first goal against the French in the tournament uh, and sending Barthez the wrong way to set up a fascinating second half. What a piece at the interval. 
Well, the second half, not surprisingly, of course, was full of nerves, but 11 minutes into it, uh, France got the crucial moment. There was a big question as to whether there was a bit of offside in this move, uh, but a thrilling finish uh, from Petit. He only scored two goals last season for his club. He hasn't got a great scoring record uh, for France, but he hit this one crisply through a ruck of players with a deflection, and the delight was there for all to see. France winners by two goals to one, and giving themselves the opportunity that if they could beat Paraguay in Lens to play the remainder of the matches right the way through to the final in the start of France. A satisfactory start for the hosts. Well, for the Champions Brazil, their campaign got underway in the opener in the Stade de France against Scotland on June the 10th. Tickets definitely hard to come by for fans for this one. Many Scotsmen, many Brazilians looking for tickets, but to no avail. And Scotland behind on five minutes. That was Cesar Sampao from the corner of Bebeto. Talk about handball afterwards, maybe a touch from Craig Burley as Burley went in near post with Sampao. But the goal stood and Jim Layton was beaten. The Scots won down early on but coming back into things on 38 minutes Kevin Gallagher fouled by Sam Pao and up steps John Collins from the spots all square on 38 minutes and Scotland frustrating the world champions in the Stade de France in the opener of France 98 well Brazil would make changes in this one Danielson the most expensive footballer in the world would come on for Bebeto with 20 minutes to play Scotland though holding on and looking good for a draw until disaster would strike on 73 minutes. It really was cruel for the Scots this one. Roberto Carlos involves Cafu coming in. Leighton with a touch but in off Boyd. Cafu would claim the goal but it was Boyd's own goal and Scotland going down bravely but still going down 2-1. And so to Nantes and Brazil against Morocco. And here we were to see Ronaldo with a clinical strike to set his mark on what would be very much an up and down World Cup for the world's most expensive player. Ronaldo, hot property, and that against Morocco was a hot finish on nine minutes. The only surprise was that it took until the 47th minute for uh, Brazil to add a second. When it came, it was Rivaldo who made it 2-0. And the third involved brilliant play from Ronaldo, showing the complete player he is, with the pass to Bebeto to seal a fabulous Brazil performance with a three-goal win. 3-0, Brazil beat Morocco, and it was Brazil who, as expected, had won Group A. Well, Scotland went into their last group match in San Etienne knowing a win and a Norwegian defeat in Marseille would see them through into the second round for the first time. But simply a night of disaster for the Scots. Undone by Bassir on 22 minutes. Hendry and Leighton at fault there. Hendry with the initial mistake and Leighton beaten on the near post. All going wrong for the Scots and continuing to go wrong as well because they were killed off on 47 minutes effectively by Hada. Again, Leighton won't have been happy with his contribution there. And the Scots, seemingly with matters in their own hands, having them taken right out of those hands by Hadda and Bessier. They were two down on 47 minutes. While Brazil were helping them in Marseille. Goalless in the first half against Norway. Brazil already through by this stage. They were resting only Aldair. But then on 79 minutes, Danielson with magical work on the left-hand side and Bebeto, a hero, of course, from USA 94, striking. And that's giving some hope to the Scots and effectively killing off any Norwegian hopes completely. But Norway would fight back and sensationally fight back. On 83 minutes, Bjornaby would find Tori Andre Flo of Chelsea that was a fantastic finish on the right foot and suddenly Norway who'd beaten Brazil 4-2 and a friendly the year before were back in things or well, meanwhile back in Saint Etienne Scotland were simply sinking without trace this was on 85 minutes already two down the Scots 
and it was just really going from bad to worse. The third goal for Basia deflected in off Hendry, late and no chance, and Scotland saying goodbye. Morocco joining Costa Rica and Peru on the list of Scottish World Cup horror stories. But Morocco thinking they were going through until this on 89 minutes in Marseille. Bahamas, the referee from the USA, pointing to the spots. Heaven knows why for that challenge. On Torre Andre Flo from Bayano, it looked harsh to say the least. But suddenly, Norway with a chance of going through at the expense of Morocco. Up stepped Rekdal against Tafarel. And Norway, would you believe it, 2 1 winners at the death in the very last minutes when Morocco thought that they were en route to the second round. Michel, the coach, knew the situation before his players, but for Scotland, another misery ending to a World Cup. Back to France 98. With Opal. On paper, Nigeria against Spain in the opening match in Nantes on the 13th of June was always going to be a classic. And this time, the match never let down the pre-match hype. Spain were to take the lead with a rare free kick. But watch for the deflection from Hierro. The Spanish fans obviously delighted, the Real Madrid player with a clinical finish, but the lead was to last only four minutes. Spain undone by a brilliant header at the near post by Adipoju. 1-1. Spain, though, continued to have most of the play, and Hierro and Raul were to combine for what looked like being the decisive goal. Quite brilliant finish, and it was one that was straight out of the Real Madrid textbook. Raul finishing in magnificent fashion and an early contender for one of the goals of the tournament. But Nigeria drew level, although Zubi Zareta, the legendary Spanish keeper, will not be pleased with the events that unfold. Arguably, his own goal, Yakini and Lawal involved as well, but after 73 minutes, it was definitely the turning point of the match. And Doni Zubi Zareta has had far greater nights than what happened in Nantes on this particular occasion. Still Spain pressed forward and either side could have won. Chances came and went. Raul should have taken that one and given Spain the three points, which were ultimately to prove so costly. But 12 minutes from time with Okocha's long throw not properly cleared and Nigeria were in front to get the winner with a goal from Olicia. An amazing match, some special celebrations from the Nigerian supporters here in France to see whether they could become the first African winners. Well, what a start, beating the highly fancied Spaniards by two goals to one in the match of the tournament so far. Well, it got worse for Spain. The final matches in Group D saw Paraguay knowing a win would see them through against group winners Nigeria in Toulouse. And Paraguay got off to simply a stunning start. The free kick coming in here from Arce. And watch for Ayala with the header. That was Ayala of River Plate. And that was 1-0 to Paraguay. And Paraguay with the situation in their own hands. While Spain knew they had to rely on a Paraguay slip-up. Well, Spain could only try and win as best they could. They got a penalty against Bulgaria in Lens on five minutes. The foul by Ordenev on Herrero and van der Ende, the Dutch referee, pointing to the spot. It would be Herrero from the spot to make it 1-0 Spain on six minutes. But back in the other match, well, Spain given hope. An equaliser for Nigeria. Wilson Aroma on 11 minutes, bringing Nigeria back on terms against Paraguay in Toulouse. And suddenly things looking up for Spain because they were going on a goal fest against a very sorry Bulgaria who had hopes of going through two before this match. But they were 2-0 down 
to Luis Enrique strike there on 19 minutes. King Juan Carlos among the crowd watching. And on 53 minutes came goal number three. Fantastic finish from Morientes after great work by Luis Enrique. Stravkov beaten once again. But Bulgaria did get one back on 56 minutes. Watch for this strike by Kostadinov into the top right-hand corner. In off the post, in fact, beating Zubi Zareta. But Bulgaria effectively down for the count. But Spain hoping for Nigeria to do something. Well, the only team that did something was Paraguay. That was Benitez, who ironically plays for Espanyol in Spain. What a reception he'll get back next season. Clemente knew the writing now was on the wall with Paraguay ahead. Spain, though, just kept on scoring in Lens. That was Morientes for 4-1, his second of the night. But Paraguay would now make sure of their place in the second round after terrible work really by Rufai, the Nigerian keeper. He was at sixes and sevens and made to pay in the end by Cardozo. Paraguay en route to meet France in the second round. 3-1 winners and that really made it irrelevant what was happening in the other match in Lens. Spain though would keep on scoring and keep on scoring. Kiko came on for Alfonso and would get a brace in the closing stages. That was for 5-1, but the writing by this stage really on the wall for those Spanish fans. They knew their World Cup dream was over. Remember, unbeaten in qualification, and Clemente's team with a fantastic record under him. Only a handful of defeats under his leadership. And this late goal fest really quite now irrelevant. The Spanish players knew it, the, the fans did. And this really the first surprise of France 98. Spain beaten by Nigeria, held by Paraguay, and they left their best too late. Quite simply, a disastrous campaign for Spain, of whom so much had been expected. But it was left to Paraguay to celebrate their place in the second round, fantastic performance by then. They've been held by Bulgaria, frustrated Spain, but when it mattered, they pulled out the win and beat Nigeria. And so to the Group E encounters, Holland, Mexico, Belgium and South Korea. Mexico had beaten Korea, Holland and Belgium had drawn 0-0, Belgium and Mexico had drawn 2-2 and Holland had beaten Korea by five goals to nil. And the Dutch were looking good to top the group, but they made a great early start in their final match against Mexico. Ron de Boer to Burkamp and Philip Koku with the opening goal. Belgium, meanwhile, also made a great start, knowing a victory against South Korea would be enough probably to take them through. There were lots of imponderables here. When Luke Nillis, who plays for PS3, gave them the lead in the Parc de France, things were going so sweetly for Belgium. But Holland themselves put in arguably their best 45 minutes of the tournament and they were in irresistible form. A second goal for them from Ronald de Boer after 18 minutes and the Mexicans were out for the count. Now to the second half action of Belgium against South Korea. And the action was intense. Certainly South Korea uh, were under a lot of pressure and Luke Nillis hit the crossbar. Surely 2-0 and there would have been no comeback for the Koreans. But amazingly, with 19 minutes left, Korea grabbed a goal completely against the odds from Yu sang Chu to give them the equaliser and break the Belgian hearts. Holland, meanwhile, were to play a slack last 20 minutes against Mexico, conceding two goals here from the corner, the ball put home by Pelayas. And the Mexicans, who'd come from behind uh, to beat Korea in the first match, level things up deep into stoppage time when Hernandez managed the goal. 2-2, a big shock, but Holland and Mexico would both go through. The disappointment for Belgium and their players was intense. Luke Nunes will ponder just how many chances he wasted despite scoring the goal. Mexico, though, they qualify.
back to France 98 with official restaurant of the World Cup, McDonald's. Welcome back. Well, the Clash of the Titans took place in Lens in Group F. It was Germany against Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia hadn't beaten Germany, West Germany or Germany in 25 years. There were some sickening scenes outside the stadium. A gendarme attacked by German thugs and left in a coma. And on the pitch, some dramatic action. Yugoslavia going 1-0 up after a really comical goal for Andy Kopka, the German keeper, on 13 minutes. Stankovic would claim it. FIFA later gave it to Mijatovic, who'd played him the cross. There was a faint touch there from Stankovic. Jeremies couldn't retrieve the situation on the line, and Germany won down on 13. But it was to be a day that Lothar Matthäus would remember forever. He came on on 46 minutes for Christian Zieger. A 22nd World Cup Finals appearance for him. That broke a record. But it was going from bad to worse for Kopka. Dreadful error on 54 minutes. And Stojkovic scored. His grandmother could have scored. And Germany in, it seemed, for a real pasting. But Michael Tarnan had come on for Zieger. And Germany came back into things on 74 minutes. Tarnat would strike this free kick and watch for the savage deflection off Mihailovic. Germany back into this match, courtesy of an outrageous piece of good luck. But luck, nevertheless, which would help propel a second-half fight back. In the closing moments, they were all over Yugoslavia. Kral had to make a brilliant save there from Bierhoff. Klinsmann moving in for the kill on the back post, but couldn't get the final contact. But respite, only momentary for Yugoslavia, because from the corner from Ton, up popped Oliver Bierhoff. And that was 2-2 with 10 minutes still to play. And the man who'd won Germany Euro 96 at Wembley had got Germany out of jail at the death. A great comeback, though, from Germany. Well, this was the match that got news headlines as well as sport headlines around the world. The peace match between Iran and the USA. Well, it was to produce a surprise as the Iranians were to show that they too themselves can play the football. Uh, and after 40 minutes, it was Estili's header that sent them into ecstasy in Tehran. In all fairness, uh, the Iranians in the red thoroughly deserved to win this match and it was no surprise when uh, great play from Ali Dai set in uh, Madavikya a long run 2-0 and the focus of his run and the intensity of the occasion had shown what it meant to these Iranians although the Americans pulled back a goal from McBride uh, with uh, three minutes left it was uh, in the Iranian streets where there was uh, great joy as the final scoreline hit home for them, this was like winning the World Cup. Similar scenes to what uh, the French experienced on the 12th and 13th of July. Joy in Tehran. Well, in Group G, Romania and England both off to winning starts. England 2-0 winners over Tunisia down in Marseille, of course. And Romania had beaten Colombia thanks to a goal from Adrian Illy. Great chip by him to secure that win and very nearly doing the same again against Dave Seaman. That was on 27 minutes against England in Toulouse. Romania, remember, seeded in this group. England, not so. But Romania going ahead on 47 minutes. Thanks to a man England know much about. Moldovan of Coventry City with a fine finish. Tony Adams was the defender left stranded after Hadji with the neat flick. And England, having held out in the opening 45, suddenly behind two minutes after the restart. But they had chances to get back into things. And on 64 minutes, they fashioned this. Darren Anderton right on the byline and fizzing one straight across the face of the Romanian goal. Straight past Shearer and Sheringham. Or Michael Owen, the mighty atom, had been left out controversially before the start. Many said afterwards, if he had a started, it could have been different. But he came on and immediately made a difference. That was 1-1 on 83 minutes. And the mighty atom exploding onto France 98. And England were back on terms. Stelia beaten in the Romanian goal. 
and the decision to bring on Owen fully vindicated by events. But disaster for England would come right at the death. One that Graham Lasso won't want to see again, nor Dave Seaman, nutmegged by Dan Petrescu, ironically a player signed by Glenn Hoddle when he was manager at Chelsea. And Petrescu, right at the death, gave Romania the win after some dreadful English defending. Owen went on to hit a post, but not enough, and England beaten for the first time, 2-1 in Toulouse. And so to Lance, where it was winner takes all. Colombia knew that they could still qualify, they needed a win. England, though, they had to avoid defeat to qualify for the second phase. Well, this was a match in which the high-level pressure of the World Cup produced a cauldron of an atmosphere in Lens, who were afraid of the outcome if England lost. Well, Darren Anderton uh, didn't specialise in uh, that particular event too often for England, but the reverse angle shows what a great, crisp, clean strike it was to give England the lead after 20 minutes. And 10 minutes later, well, David Beckham, who had a Jekyll and Hyde World Cup finals, was to show the best the side that uh, those that have followed his career closely know with a free kick, arguably the best free kick of the tournament, to give England some breathing space and a two-goal advantage. Relief and joy for those on the bench, Glenn Hoddle, John Gorman and Ray Clements, and uh, it was certainly a competent England performance. At the end of the day, though, uh, this was uh, only the first phase. There was a job still to be done, and England had reached the last 16. Well, in Group H, the arrival of the Reggae Boys Jamaica was welcomed in Lens. Their first match was against Croatia and Jamaica, where they squad ram jam full of English-based players like Hall and Simpson of Portsmouth, Earl of Wimbledon. But they were up against high-class and highly technical opposition here in Croatia. And Croatia ahead on 27 minutes. That was Malio Stanic of Parma after Stimak shot coming down off the bar and Barrett was beaten and Jamaica behind with not even half an hour play but they got back on terms thanks to a stunning goal on the stroke of half time watch for the cross here from Ricardo Gardner and look at that for a header from Robbie Earl of Wimbledon fantastic supply and brilliant execution and that's in many ways the highlights of Jamaica's World Cup it went wrong after this but that was a fantastic goal for the travelling fans many of whom of course had come over from the UK to follow their team. Jamaica, though, undone by a lucky strike there from Prozanecki, eight minutes after the restart. Surely a cross, not a shot. And is scoring that, Prozanecki, the first man in World Cup finals to score for two countries. He scored for Yugoslavia in 1990. And the victory wrapped up somewhat fortuitously by Devil Suka with that deflected shot off the underside of... Gardner's leg. 3-1 to Croatia and Jamaica realising how tough the World Cup was going to be. Argentina would find form in their first match uh, against uh, Japan. They struggle with Batistuta getting the only goal, but in the second match they ran in the goals with Batistuta getting a second half hat-trick. In the big clash, Batistuta really should have done better with an early opportunity against Croatia in a match which was destined to be tight. In the end goal, one uh, goal was enough uh, to give Argentina the points and qualification. Pineda on the end of a fine piece of play from Ortega. One thing's for certain, Argentina uh, knew that uh, they would be playing uh, England in the last 16. Well, they were going to be up uh, against uh, a strong side in what was being billed, even at this stage, as one of the clashes of the tournament. A fine uh, save, Gallardo. Shot to deflected by Ladic, and in the end, 1 0 was the final score. Well, the Group B clash, Italy against Chile, took place in Bordeaux. It took place in one country. It was a tasty Italian white against a South American red, and this was vintage stuff all round. Italy ahead on 10 minutes, thanks to a great ball in from Roberto Baggio, and that was Christian Vieri. That was 1-0, Tapia was beaten. But Chile came back into things on 48 minutes. The Zaza partnership of Zamorano and Salas very much to the fore here. Zamorano winning the header for his manager Nelson Acosta and Salas was there to pounce the man, of course, who'd sunk England with those two goals at Wembley in the run-up to France 98. 
and five minutes after the restarts, Chile sensationally were in front. Again, Italy undone in the air. Again, Salas. Cannavaro was the defender who was outjumped, and Paliuca beaten emphatically by the Chilean striker. So Italy chasing the game, but they got back into the match thanks to an outrageous piece of good fortune. Penalty, said the referee, Boschado for handball against Fuentes. Surely it was ball to hands, but Roberto Baggio coming up to exercise the demons of USA 94. He'd made 11 spot kicks for Bologna in Syria out last year, but certainly pressure on his mind as he came up to bring Italy level at 2-2. Well, Italy's next match against Cameroon in Montpellier and a 50th cap for Roberto Baggio in this match and certainly he was very much to the fore. Now he laid on the first goal on seven minutes for Luigi Di Baggio. The first goal for Di Baggio but really all the spade work done by Roberto. The Azzurri in front and benefiting from a sending off on 43 minutes. That was Ray Callop with really one of the fouls of the tournament. Instantly dismissed by referee Lenny of Australia. A fourth player to be sent off at France 98. He looked dumbstruck, but really it was a vicious challenge. Two-footed right onto the right thigh of the goal scorer, Di Baggio. And the two coaches seeing the fortunes of their teams go in opposite directions. Well, Italy then playing against 10 men moved swiftly to wrap up the match. They got their second of the night on 40, rather 75 minutes. Fantastic chip there from Vieri. Third goal of France, 98 for him, making him the joint leading scorer. And then with a minute to play, it was Vieri muscling and bustling in to get in front of Songo and to wrap up a 3-0 win for Italy. But Christian Vieri proving what a powerhouse forward he can be. Chile against Cameroon took place in Nantes, and this was the danger moment. Sierra with a fine free kick. No worries now for Chile. They led by a goal to nil. But amazingly, it was after this match, uh, or after this goal, that they fell asleep. And in the second half, the whole match was to change on that instant. Rigobert Song, who'd already been booked, goes down into World Cup history as the first man ever to be sent off in consecutive World Cups. He really cost his side dear through a moment of madness and having already been set, shown a yellow card he must have been aware of the situation Cameroon they came back into it the spirit of the indomitable Alliance was there for all to see and a fantastic header from Mbomba after great work from Oman Big leveled the score and then this still they ask why oh why was this goal disallowed pushing by Mbomba on Paraguay's come on Well, it looked one of the harshest decisions that uh, really has ever affected any side, but it was enough to knock Cameroon out. With... Konica. Welcome back, and so to the second round action, which for Brazil meant a clash with Chile in the Parc des Princes. It was a wet, murky Saturday night in Paris for this one, and history suggesting Chile didn't have much chance. Only six wins from 50. Weight of history on their shoulders. But it was to go wrong, and wrong in a spectacular manner. Now, they leaked a goal on 11 minutes, the free kick for that challenge there. And now they were chasing the game. Well, it wasn't long before they'd be under siege again. And that was a second and effectively the goal which would kill them off. In some ways, fortuitous in the way in which it fell to Sao Paulo. They had given the penalty, but the game effectively over from Ronaldo in front of Ronaldina in the stands. And Brazil now coasting it 3-0 up and looking really to fill their boots. And certainly it seemed as though they would the post there denying Ronaldo 
thumping shot from him. Tapia really no chance, but lucky to see that ball bounce away off the woodwork. But Chile weren't going to give up without a fight, and they got one back on 68 minutes. A real poacher's goal there from Salas. In fact, a 28th international goal for him, a Chilean record. But really, that's irrelevant to the situation of the match and the fact that Chile had to find two more somehow. As it turned out, though, it was to be Brazil who wrapped things up. An easy finish for Ronaldo on 70 minutes, played in by Denilson. And having had a sniff of a hope, Chile had the flame extinguished. Chile left with only six wins in 56 meetings with Brazil, and Brazil marching serenely on on a wet night in the Parque des Princes. And so to Saint-Denis and Nigeria against Denmark. So much expected of the Nigerians, but this was to be the classic case of being caught by not just one, but two early blows. Denmark in front after three minutes. Jorgensen did well. Laudrup set the move up. Moller with the finish, and the Danes had a dream start. Well, if one wasn't uh, bad enough, what was to follow must have been a nightmare for Bora Milutinovic, the charismatic coach of the Nigerian side. Remember, he's the man who has, in past World Cups, coached Costa Rica, Mexico and the USA. Well, 12 minutes gone, and Brian Laudrup, uh, the instigator here, at the end of the move where it counted, at the sharp end. And the man on his way to Chelsea, giving Denmark but surely, even at this stage, was an unassailable two-goal lead. Rafai neither punch nor really decisively parried, and uh, a loud drop was in to make it 2-0. This, though, was a very entertaining match, probably one of the uh, uh, most exciting of the last 16. And Kanu here, who's uh, relieved just to be still playing football, uh, going close with uh, Schmeichel, unable to collect it and uh, the parry was saved but there were opportunities and opportunities galore for the uh, Nigerians Okocha we had a fine match uh, the provider here and the ball just going wide Denmark though were running the show as you would expect the side who were 2-0 up Brian Laudrup well he tried the same in the wind uh, in an amazing uh, qualification match a goal that we've uh, seen several times uh, against uh, Croatia well this one uh, was a similar effort not with the same wind intensity and Rufai was caught out the Danes though in complete control and 2-0 would become 3-0 Laudrup uh, involved and Epe Sand with the finish the substitute who'd been on the field less than half a minute repeating the feats achieved by Gianfranco Zola in the Cup Winners Cup final and by Lars Ricken in the 97 European Champions League final when scoring as a substitute inside 30 seconds. Denmark are now rampant. 11 minutes to go, 3-0 became 4. This time, disappointing goalkeeping from Rufai, a simple finish from Helve. The Danes in the stadium could hardly believe it. Were we going to have a similar scenario to what happened six years ago in the European Championships in Sweden when the unfancied Danes stole a march, came from nowhere and won the tournament? Nigeria only began to wake up when they were four down. Their performance, though, deserved a goal, particularly Okocha, who was outstanding. But it was Babangida, the Ajax man, one of the fastest players in the tournament who got the consolation with 12 minutes to go. In the end, though, there was only one winner in this match, despite the late Babangida effort. Great finish, incidentally, because Denmark were through to a quarter-final meeting with Brazil. Now, that was a tasty proposition.
Well, the French bandwagon rolled into Lens for the second round match against Paraguay. Blanc would do the kissing early on. He'd get a lot more kisses, though, from teammates by the end of this one. It really was a pulsating match, and Chilabert was to have an excellent game for Paraguay. France without Zidane for this one. They'd scored nine goals in qualification in the group. All back, and they had early chances to get on the score sheet, principally for Trezeguet, who wasn't far away there. That was on 15 minutes. His defenders really perfectly and the number of times in the second 45 as France came forward where he was exposed were really few and far between the match going from normal time into extra time on the read by this stage had gone off on a stretcher Paraguay really threatened very little that was Acuna with a rare moment of danger for Barthez in the French goal but suddenly, it was down to the knife-edge situation of golden goal, extra time. And with 113 minutes on the clock, heartbreak for Chilabert and for Paraguay. They'd fought like tigers, but Laurent Blanc with a 14th goal in 72 internationals had put France through. A dramatic match, though. Italy against Norway. If ever a match looked destined to be decided by a golden goal, it was this one. And in the end, it turned out not to be the case. But two sides who were, uh, I think, far uh, from happy to uh, go on the attack and take too many risks. But a brilliant finish from Christian Vieri settled the match. Nevertheless, Norway can count themselves very unlucky in a game in which the Italians did only just enough to reach the last eight. Certainly, when you have your abiding memories of France 98, I doubt very many will take home Italy against Norway as one of their favourite moments. Nevertheless, Torre Andre Flo, really a very unlucky, a brilliant piece of goalkeeping from Padluca. That is one moment that I'll uh, remember from this match, but one of very few. A disappointing affair. Italy the winners, though, by one goal to nil. And so they were on their way to Saint-Denis. Germany against Mexico, though, uh, in fairness, was uh, a match which had just about everything. The Germans here knew that there was a big chance that this could be the day then they, they may have been eliminated. Mexico in good form, Bierhoff having the best of the early efforts onto the crossbar. It was a match in which uh, Mexico acquitted themselves uh, particularly well, and just after the break, they got the crucial opening goal, which could easily have paved the way for one of the big upsets. Well, one of the players that have been talked about uh, all around the world, Hernandez, opening the scoring. A player who uh, combined here with Blanco to give them the lead with a bit of trickery that was outstanding and really giving Kopka no chance. And the turning point of the match, really, uh, on the post, a fine save. It actually took a deflection off the defender and Hernandez will wonder quite how he didn't score from the rebound. A double deflection onto the post and Mexico, well, if they'd gone two up, there would have been no reply for the Germans. Then, 15 minutes to go. Hammer and a brilliant finish from Klinsmann. A striker's goal, if ever have seen one, an equaliser, and Germany had got themselves out of yet another rock. Lara made the error, Klinsmann pounced, 1-1. Tarnat again, this time involved, Kirsten would be there as well. But what a finish from Oliver Bierhoff to give Germany an unlikely win and a place in the last eight. Well, this uh, German side heavily criticised in many quarters, not just uh, by the opposition, but by the home press as well. Now they would face Croatia or Romania. Well, that match took place in Bordeaux, Croatia against Romania. The Croatians' favourites, perhaps, but uh, Romania by this time had dyed their hair. But this was the match where their World Cup hopes simply died. It was a match where Bogdan Stelea, the Salamanca keeper, really would excel and excel very well. That save there from Asanovic, ex of Derby County, 
and certainly in no way can Bogdan Stelia be blamed for the defeat which arose from this moment on 45 minutes. Now this surely one of the most debatable talking points of the World Cup. Castrilli, the referee from Argentina, now was that a penalty, Gabriel Popescu on Asanovic? Well, the referee said yes. Up steps Suka, he had to take it twice. And on both occasions, Suka was on target. It came down to a penalty, a debatable decision, but in the end, Croatia probably good value for the win. Holland against Yugoslavia. And this was a match in which uh, the Dutch were strongly fancied against the dangerous floaters. Well, Dennis Bergkamp produced a moment of brilliance. He may have been a little lucky because there was more than a hint of a push, but nevertheless, the skill had to be admired. Fantastic long pass forward to him. Bergkamp took out the defender, but also beat him with some extravagant uh, uh, play. 1-0 Holland. It was all going so well until three minutes into the second half. Very poor defensive play from Holland. Kormilenovic uh, getting in on the far post to equalise. And Yugoslavia were right back in the game. And then came the turning point in this match. Yapstam, he hasn't had a, a great uh, World Cup, but he was penalised here. Arguably a little unlucky. He couldn't believe the penalty had been given. Nevertheless, uh, it was a decision that was uh, really to put the nerves and the minds on Miatovic. It took a long time, he went for power and became the first uh, player to miss in 100 matches in the World Cup. He became the first player to miss in two and a half World Cups since the last player in 90 minutes missed a penalty. Nevertheless, this match was decided in the last minute of normal time. Was hitting delighted as Edgar Davids scored the winning goal. Holland deserved their victory, but this time they left it late. Argentina against England. Some memories of uh, World Cup clashes in which uh, he didn't quite realise until afterwards how good an opportunity it was. Anyway, goals would have come plenty. Atistuta and a yellow card, five minutes of the World Cup. England fell asleep for Zanetti and he scored in a European final with Inter Milan against Lazio. This season he scored in the World Cup a really fantastic goal. Then an amazing moment. David Beckham kicking out. And the replay. Showing that what he did was stupid right in front of the referee who produced a red card. Beckham couldn't believe it, becoming only the fifth England player to be sent off all away from home all in the month of June. So Campbell thought he'd got what would have been the winner surely but uh, the goal ruled out for an elbow by Alan Shearer. Once again, England seems to be cursed and their supporters who've made the trip and paid the high price the Taos wanted for tickets for this match in St Etienne. Has extra time for the 10 Lions. Alan Shearer can count himself very unlucky not to have got a penalty there because there was uh, certainly a case of handball. It was hand overhead. Paul Merson floating in an opportunity and this time the header going wide. And a nation expected 2-2 between England and Argentina until Paul Ince missed the penalty at 1-1. And Veron making it 2-1 to set things up. It came down to David Batty, who had to score to keep England in the World Cup. Batty's penalty was saved, and the penalty shootout curse for England. Germany 
in the World Cup in Italy in 1990. Germany in the European Championships at Wembley in 96. Now Argentina in the last 16 of the World Cup in 98. And David Batty and Paul Ince will join the others who missed penalties in seven. Well, Croatia against Germany took place in Lyon, the quarter-final, and Chancellor Helmut Kohl was there to cheer on Germany. Germany, remember, knocked out by Bulgaria four years before the same stage, the quarter-finals. Germany dreaming of a tenth semi-final at the World Cup, and they had chances early on, certainly. Oliver Bierhoff with an early header there on 31 minutes. The man who's moving to AC Milan after some great years over at Udinese. But it was a match to be effectively influenced by the sending off on 40 minutes of Christian Verns. The foul on Suka, out came the red card from referee Rune Pedersen. And Germany up against it 10 minutes before half time. And made to pay three minutes after half time. Yani firing one in on the left foot, too good for Kopka, and that was a sensational strike, and the Croatian bench, Croatia in fact, full stop, exploding. The nation playing their first World Cup on the verge of a huge shock, and having been given the good fortune of that, sending off for Verns on 40 minutes, they fully capitalised. The referee, it must be said, had an iffy game. He should arguably have sent off Stimak as well, but Croatia weren't complaining. And for Bertie Vokes, who'd seen his team get out of jail against Mexico, also against Yugoslavia, another fight was certainly on the cards. They were very close to getting one back. Bierhoff appealing for a penalty, but uh, Ladic had made the save, not this time for Bierhoff who'd scored those late goals against uh, Yugoslavia and then Mexico before this match. Certainly, Germany with it all to do. They couldn't afford another mistake. And Kopka really making a save from Boban there, which kept his team in the game. That was on 67 minutes. At the other end, Germany went close. Haman, the man, denied, and not by much, with Ladic going down. But Croatia, such a dangerous team on the counter, and they would make Germany pay in a break. Four on three, and what a finish. Vlavic just bending one superbly across Kopka and into the bottom corner, and with ten minutes to go, Surely that was that. Ulf Kirsten and Olaf Marshall by this time drafted on as Germany attempted once again to get out of jail. They got a reputation of the, as the comeback kings. But this time they'd met their match and finished off by Suka on 86 minutes, a fourth goal of France 98 for him. And it was to be a long night for those Croatian fans. A huge shock, really. Croatia dangerous, but not expected to put three past Germany for none in return. And would you believe it, Croatia playing their first World Cup finals, a tiny nation going through to the semi-final. Perhaps the greatest moment ever in Croatian football history. And Germany quite simply put to the sword. 3-0 it finished. For Jürgen Klinsmann, the end of the international road for him. And a night of heartbreak for Germany all round. To France 98. With Opel. And so to the Stade de France for the quarter-final clash between Italy and France. Les Bleus against the Azzurri. 
And France back in the Stade de France, having played there against Saudi Arabia in the group stage. And they had Zidane back for this one after suspension, after being sent off in that match against Saudi Arabia. And Zidane anxious to make his presence felt again. Paliuka Petit, who really, in the last 12 months, a man had come from nowhere. Having a great season with Arsenal, helping them win the double, and now featuring in the engine room of the French midfield. Zidane was tormenting Italy, though. But the finishing for France left something to be desired. Henri, the man with a shot there, high and handsome. He was later replaced by Callum Burr. Trezeguet came on for Givash as well. And for Italy, well, Del Piero out. Roberto Baggio in. And nearly an Italian goal from Roberto Baggio. That was late in the game. Still no way through as normal time gave way to golden goal extra time and from golden goal extra time to penalties well certainly Bartes looks calm enough Paliuka more thoughtful Italy remember had the heartbreak of missing out on penalties in USA 94 up stepped Lizarazu disaster for him Hits much too close to Pagliuca, the man who'd come in at France in 88 for Angelo Peruzzi. And now the pressure on. Albertini for Italy against Bartes of France. Disaster for Albertini. 1-1. Some consoling words for Deschamps for Lizarazu. The matter now very much out of his hands. And in the hands of Laurent Blanc, the hero for France in Lens against Paraguay in the second round. As nerves went through the shredder in the Stade de France. Blanc scored though. He scored along with Henri, Trezeguet and Zidane. They were all on targets. Four men on target for France. And the pressure... But for Italy, once again, the heartbreak of going out in a World Cup on penalties. What a nightmare for them. And so to Nantes for Brazil against Denmark. A colourful atmosphere and another amazing match. Early goals were something that Denmark specialised in this. But against Brazil, surely they couldn't... Uh, provide one as quickly as they did against Nigeria. What a quickly worked free kick, some inspiration from Brian Laudrup and Jorgensen on hand to give Denmark the lead. From a neutral point of view, this was the start that everyone in Nantes wanted because now it was game on. What really impressed me about Brazil in this particular performance was the way they bounced back so quickly. They'd only been behind for seven minutes, but Beto though knew exactly his target and it was to beat Peter Schmeichel and give Brazil an equaliser and put them right back in the match. 11 minutes played, it was a wonderful pass from Romari, from uh, Ronaldo. He flat fielded it through and Bebeto finished it with some aplomb. Ronaldo again, influential, and this time the creator again for Rivaldo. 2-1. Tafarel delighted at one end. Well, it was the heavyweight challenge of uh, Dunga. It was the subtle pass of uh, Ronaldo. And it was the deft touch of Rivaldo. Into the second half, and Denmark got themselves back in it. Shambles at the back. And Brian Laudrup making no mistake with the finish. 2-2 and a quarter-final that was very much in the balance. You always felt, though, that Brazil under Zagallo would have the edge. And on the air, again, it was a combination play from Ronaldo and Dunga. It was a excellent play from Dunga. And it was another wonderful strike from Rivaldo. 3-2. Still, you felt there were more goals to come in the match. Peter Schmeichel beaten, and Denmark threw everything forward in search of trying to 
get the equaliser and they had some chances well that was without doubt the best of them across the face of the goal the pass across drag back Hog coming up Reaper there as well and another clear chance this time on top of the crossbar and it was to be the last opportunity Reaper twice being denied but Brazil were through to the semi-final where they would play Holland or Argentina Well, that match in Marseille, Holland against Argentina, quite simply one of the games of the tournament. Marseille, a place where Holland had put five past South Korea in the qualifying stage. And for England, well, the English fans really could only think of what may have been seeing Argentina play in this match. 60,000 fans jammed into the Stad Velodrome and they saw Koku miss a great chance to give Holland the lead on six minutes. Argentina really in all sorts of problems at the back and Roa so grateful to see that shot thump onto his left-hand post and Kleibertz couldn't retrieve the situation. Gus Hiddink aware that that was a great chance squandered early on but quite simply this was to be a sensational match. The first goal arriving on 12 minutes, Kleibertz but really Dennis Bergkamp with that header the man who'd shown the brilliance to create the goal. Fantastic assist by Bergkamp in a match which would produce three goals and two players sent off. Argentina, though, to their credit, only behind for five minutes. Holland caught out, playing for offside. Claudio Lopez was in and nutmegs. Nutmegs van der Sar. That was cheeky and that was 1-1. He had a player to his right decided not to use him and really took matters very much into his own hands and if he'd have messed that up well they probably wouldn't have let him home but he didn't and it was all square on 17 minutes suddenly Argentina sensing that they have the game for the taking Ortega one of the players of the tournament letting one fly from distance and van der Sar very grateful to see that one slam against his post and away well, Veron and Ortega, who'd been kept largely in check by England, now trying to get things going against the Dutch. And again, Woodwork being slammed, Batistuta with a rocket which flew off van der Sar's right-hand post, then right back across goal before going away to safety. Mark Overmars trying to get Holland going, Cliver with a header, great touch though by Roa. This really was a match of some ebb and flow down in Marseille in baking heat. Some of the games in northern France seeing much different weather to this, but in Marseille it was hot and the players were certainly feeling it. Well, two players were sent off in this game and Arthur Newman, newly of Rangers, was the first to go for a foul on Simeone, a second yellow card and Simeone, the man involved with the sending off David Beckham, involved in another one. Well, it wouldn't be long before another player was to be sent off. Yap Stam, tangling with Ortega, who was looking for the penalty. And then Ortega, raising his head and sending van der Sar, it must be said, theatrically flying. Van der Sar was looking for the sending off, rather like Ortega was looking for the penalty. No penalty but a sending off and both teams down to 10 men with three minutes to play it looked like golden goal extra time written all over this one until one of the goals of the tournaments right at the death Dennis Bergkamp have been tormenting defenses all season in England before this one touch two down bang and Holland at the death were through 
courtesy of Magic from Dennis Bergkamp. He rightly took the accolades. A Rolls-Royce of a player with a vintage finish. And for many English fans as well as Dutch, a sweet moment to see Argentina on their way after events between England and Argentina in the match before. Holland through, though, 2-1. Back to France 98 with official restaurant of the World Cup, McDonald's. Marseille, the venue for Brazil against Holland. A repeat of a clash involved in uh, 1994 in which uh, we saw a sterile first half and a fantastic second half and Brazil 3-2 winners. Both sides this time wearing their normal colours. Brazil in their familiar yellow and blue. Holland in orange and white. And once again, Ronaldo was a Dutch connection, having started his career in Europe with the PSV, and that wasn't lost on several of the Dutch supporters uh, in the velodrome for this occasion. Patrick Kluivert, though, was to have the major opportunities and that header just over the bar perhaps the best of them after good work from Koku Clivert knew that uh, he wouldn't get too many better opportunities than that Holland pressing forward in stoppage time at the end of the first half and Clivert again off the target and like four years ago in Dallas it was nil-nil at half time between Holland and Brazil. The Dutch fans believed they were going to win because uh, on their way was where Ronaldo got injured. Just past the post. Now Brazil felt that uh, they had the initiative. And Danielson with all the tricks across the face of the goal. And time now running out for the Dutch. Clivert given a golden opportunity and one in which he buried over the bar. But Patrick Clivert has had a career where just when things have needed was only to see one golden goal. Plenty of extra time and after the maximum third time and still now he was unlucky. Extra time and uh, well opportunities galore and somehow the Dutch held out at one end. Zagallo was tense. Everyone in the stadium was equally so. It was an epic night. Chances are plenty, even in extra time. But it was a match that looked destined to end in a shootout. Ronaldo to the edge of the penalty area. Van der Sar, this time with a really clever save because he pushed it hard enough out to force a throw in and give no chance of the rebound Van Hoydonk well he scored some uh, great free kicks for his club in England Nottingham Forest uh, this season he scored some late ones as well but this was to finish 1-1 and the penalty shootout was to be the outcome so many of these players have mixed emotion of penalty shootouts the Ajax contingent I've seen them win and lose in big events, in Champions League finals and in World Club finals. Ronaldo with the early penalty. Frank De Boer with his. Rivaldo with his. Dennis Burkamp arrogantly making it 2-2. Emerson for 3-2 Brazil. The nervous Koku. He replaced the ball, it was quick, critical. An advantage very much with Brazil. Dunga with an opportunity to put daylight between Brazil and Holland. 4-2 and the pressure now on Ronald de Boer. The Dutch were to hold an inquest. Why no penalties from their strikers? Van Hoydonk, Kluivert, Ronald de Boer with the shimmy. Brilliant save from Tafarel. You have to give him credit for that save. Brazil 
into the final of the World Cup the way they won it four years ago. For Holland, eliminated once again. And the Dutch miss out on a third World Cup final. Well, that first semi-final had been some match, of course, as you'd seen, and much for France and Croatia to live up to in Saint-Denis, in the Stade de France. Now, Croatia setting out their stall to try and soak up early French pressure here. Sudan with a deflected early shot saved by Ladic. But Miroslav Blazovic, the coach of Croatia, who'd seen his team knock out Germany and Romania after wins over Jamaica and Japan, quite happy in the early stages to let France run at the men in the tea towel shirts. But Croatia would threaten an attack on the counter. Asanovic having a pop early on after finding space. Nice little control there from the left to right foot, but no save there for Bartes to make. But he was beaten there, and suddenly the Stade de France. Would you believe it? France silenced and Croatia won up on 46 minutes. Thuram was the man at fault. He'd played in. Sukar on side from Asanovic's ball. And France behind. Only the second goal they conceded, but Thuram, the man who'd cost France the goal, was to exact swift revenge because on 47 minutes, France were back on terms. And Thuram, the defender from Parma, was the man who brought them level. What a roller coaster night he was going to have. Well, with that goal, the tempo and the pace of the game changed. Now France with the wind in their sails and Croatia having to try and resist as the wave of French attacks poured down on the goal of Ladic. He was certainly a busy man, the Croatian keeper. Henri cutting inside, small deflection, Ladic had to be alert, but despite being in his mid-30s, Ladic really had a fine night, but in the end, undone by this moment, Thuram just hitting it, he didn't look, it looked as though he looked, but he didn't, but France weren't complaining, and Lilian Thuram, ace defender, turned goal scorer, Whacking one on the left foot, curling away beyond Ladic. Now, this was a talking point, a sending off for Laurent Blanc, heartbreak for him. He knew he was now out of the final if France went through, but Bilic went down as if he'd been hit by Mike Tyson. Certainly the hand was up, but Bilic really the villain of the piece. Well, Croatia now having to do something, to do something fast. Vlavic forced to save there from Bartes. But in the end, Thuram, the man who gifted Croatia a goal, hit them with two and France through to the final. Final, which will be without Holland, who many thought would be the team to get there. The team of the tournament, in fact, for many people, but Holland and Croatia having to make do with the third, fourth place playoff in the Parc de France. A match which really the coaches would have had some tasks getting their players motivated for, particularly the, the Dutch, and they fell behind to Prozinecki. The goal for him on 13 minutes, he scored against Jamaica in that first match for Croatia. Up in Lens, it seemed like a lifetime ago. But Prozinecki had given Croatia a great start, and it really had to be said, were Holland motivated for this after the heartbreak of that penalty shootout defeat against Brazil. They changed their formation, there were injury doubts for them. Zenden had come in and brought Holland level with a cracker on the left foot on 21 minutes. Just eight minutes after going behind, Holland were back on terms. But in the end, the Dutch came unstuck by a goal once more for Davos Suka. Look at that, he didn't hang around. He whacked it first time on the left foot. A sixth goal of France, 98 for him. The golden boots on its way to Croatia. And for Croatia, a fantastic performance. A first World Cup, third place, and a 2-1 win over Holland.
France 98 with Konica. The two teams coming out for the World Cup final, the final that everyone wanted, uh, from FIFA certainly, Brazil against France. But some real drama in the build-up, Ronaldo initially informed to the millions that he wouldn't be playing, and then late on coming into the team. Drama off the field with Laurent Blanc and Barthez in an emotional reunion. And this was a final in which Brazil just simply failed to play. All the early running was made by France. All the good opportunities were, went to France. And in particular, they went to Stefan Guivarch, a recently signed, were able to get up. But the sheer impact of the collision couldn't have had a killer effort. But France still leading. But would one goal be enough? This was the moment to make it two. This was another moment that uh, certainly will not be in the scrapbook of this as well. Brazil had to make a change. Denilson had to be brought on. And they knew they were so close to winning the World Cup. Now they had to last for France. A famous 3-0 win. Several went for 3-0 before the match. Very few went for 3-0 for France. It was a day in which Brazil failed to play and France produced their best performance of the World Cup and arguably their best performance for many years. The start of France was built for the World Cup and now France had achieved a dream. Didier Deschamps naturally the first to list the trophy. Laurent Blanc up there as well, fitting for a man who was robbed of a place in the final by something as cynical as a player feigning an extra injury. The scenes in Paris on Sunday, Monday, and on Bastille Day on Tuesday, where the celebrations are still going on. Amazing, over a million people on the Champs-Élysées, all the famous landmarks of France, packed with fans who may never have been to a football match and may never bother to go to one in the future. But nevertheless, they felt part of a day in which France will never forget the first time they won the World Cup. France 98.